Good morning and welcome to Easter. Will you please stand as you are able and sing with us?
abounds in deepest waters, your sovereign hand will be my guide. Where fear may fail and fear surrounds me, you never being outside this morning in the swamp of our backyard is that we can hear you guys singing so thanks for that keep that up all right please pray with me <laughs> heavenly father we pray that our hearts will learn how to rightfully fear you we bow before you acknowledging you as lord and savior of our lives praising you for your strength your sovereignty your power your mercy and your justice we thank you for all of your unending love in your name we pray, amen.
Well, good morning, church. I'm Pastor Kevin. Welcome to Easter. So glad that you're here. Our summer worship series, The Good Book, continues this week. And by all the folks who are here for worship today, we're so glad that you're here. We want a special welcome to Henry's family as he is baptized into Christ today. We're so glad that you're here. So glad to celebrate. Clap it out. It's right. Woo, we got some good energy here today. Let's go, church. This is going to be good. At this time, I want to invite the children forward for some good news time. If you want to come down here, if you still act like a child, if you are a child, you're welcome to join me down front. Love to chat with you for a moment, and thank God that you're here. Oh, I'm so glad to see you today. Look at all these friends. Look at all these friends. This is great. Good morning, good morning. So today, I always need a lot of help, right? Do you sometimes need help? I need help like all the time. You, I've already told you that I forget my keys all the time. That's a thing, right? There's all sorts of things that I need help with. But I'm so glad that you're here because today we're also hearing some incredible stories about how God helps us. And so our friend, your friend, my friend, lead pastor Megan, who's sitting right there, she's going to be preaching for us today. She's going to tell us an incredible story from the book of Exodus. That book is kind of like the word exit, right? Like you're taking an exit, you're leaving someplace because it's a story about how God helped God's people when they were in trouble, when they were having a hard time. And does anybody remind me what this book is called? Bible, thank you, right? It's, it tells us about Jesus. It tells us about God's love. And we want to make sure that one of these are in your home and in your hands on the regular this summer. And you can learn more about that at our parent resource wall upstairs. Well, in the book of Exodus, we see that there's all sorts of people that were trying to help the Israelite people, God's people, from slavery into freedom. And there's two women today who help. They help with the babies because babies are so important, right? I mean, look at Henry right over there. Isn't he about the cutest thing you've ever seen? Look at Henry. So cute, right? And all the babies among us are gifts from God. And so we want to celebrate that. And so we're going to hear about two women who actually helped. And it's pretty incredible. If you think about our church, we're doing all kinds of things to help one another. There's a group of middle school kids who just came back from South Dakota from helping for a week with our friend Amy. We have a group of middle school and high school kids who are heading to Benton Harbor, Michigan with Deacon Hans yesterday. And then we have all these people in here who do all sorts of helpful things throughout the week, which is pretty cool. But I want you to show me your hands for a second. Can I see your hands? Look at those hands. Yeah, those hands right there. The ones you're looking at. Those are very helpful hands. And those hands can help take care of people, can help show love can help show care, can help show support. And God made those hands that you have to be able to do just that, to share God's love, to share life together, all of those things. So the next time you're wondering, how can I help? I want you to look at those hands. Can I see them again? Whoa. Those hands are helpful hands. Should we thank God for those hands? Let's thank God. Let's pray together. I want you to repeat after me. Ooh, that was good. Let's pray. Dear God, Thank you for my hands. Thank you for our church's hands. Thank you for the hands of Jesus who showed us love and we love you. Amen. Amen. Thanks for coming up, friends. We love these kids, don't we, church? What a gift they are to us. Yeah. Oh, man. Speaking of the way that God shows us love, one of the ways we do that is expressing confession and forgiveness. This is the time that we come before God with honest words, and we have a simple response. Each and every petition that we are about to pray together, together we come to you, God, grant us your gift of life. Would you please pray with me? Ready to hear God's word, we come together as one people to confess the ways 
we haven't followed God and to praise God for meeting us with grace and mercy. God, our creator, we remember with gratitude those people who built faith in our lives. We come to you, God. Grant us your gift of life. Holy Spirit, our comforter, we remember with gratitude how you have guided and inspired us this week. We come to you, God. Grant us your gift of life. Jesus, our Savior, we remember with gratitude how you have destroyed sin and death for our sake. We come to you, God. Grant us your gift of life. As one loving community, we confess the times that we have failed to share God's message of grace, the times we have not spoken faith into the lives of others, the times when our personal agendas became more important than God's unending love, the times when we became so distracted by the pressures around us that we forget the word. We come to you, God. Grant us your gift of life. We know that when we live outside God's word, we forget that God's story is our story. In Jesus Christ, we receive the gift of forgiveness. May God so bless and renew our lives that our faith might have a strong and sure foundation in Jesus, the word made flesh. Loving God, your forgiveness and grace allow us to grow in your mercy, your love, your undying life. And so in the name of Jesus, the resurrection and the life, your sins are forgiven. Amen. Thanks be to God. So as Pastor Kevin said, our lesson today is indeed from the book of Exodus, the story of uh, God's people exiting enslavement and going into freedom. This is from the very beginning of the story of Exodus setting up that story for us. And so we will hear from Exodus Chapter 1. The king of Egypt said to the Hebrew midwives, one of whom was named Shipra and the other Pua, When you act as midwives to the Hebrew women and see them on the birth stool, if it is a son, kill him. But if it is a daughter, she shall live. But the midwives feared God. They did not do as the king of Egypt commanded them, but they let the boys live. So the king of Egypt summoned the midwives and said to them, why have you done this and allowed the boys to live? The midwives said to Pharaoh, because the Hebrew women are not like the Egyptian women, for they are vigorous and give birth before the midwife comes to them. So God dealt, dwelt, God dealt well with the midwives, and the people multiplied and became very strong. And because the midwives feared God, he gave them families. Then Pharaoh commanded all his people, every son that is born to the Hebrews you shall throw into the Nile, but you shall let every daughter live. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Beloved in Christ, grace to you and peace from God our creator and our savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. So I was in labor with my eldest daughter, over the course of three calendar days. At the hospital, I was in labor and delivery for so long that the nurse who got us settled in when we arrived went off shift and then came back on shift while I was still in the hospital room before my daughter was born. <laughs> Um, this nurse was, was truly excellent, excellent. She was encouraging, she was tough, she was honest, she was compassionate, she had that good and gentle sense of humor, and by the time that I finally delivered after all that time, honestly, everything had gone wrong. Um, I was fighting an infection, uh, my, my daughter was in distress, the delivery room was suddenly very quiet and very full of specialists, and yet that nurse was by my side, getting me through. Believe it or not, two years later, we decided to give it another go anyway, and two years later, we found ourselves back at the hospital delivering my younger daughter, and as we got settled into the hospital room, this time, our nurse did a triple take. Wait, I know you, she yelled, because it was the same nurse. It was the same nurse who had been there with our first child. She uh, was enthusiastic. We were kind of bemused, but she was 
relieved because she reflected on her time with us two years ago, recalling that she had experienced my husband and I to be a pretty good team under stress, and we kept moving forward even when everything had fallen apart, and this nurse told us, I didn't know whether or not you'd decide to have another kid after all of that. I always wondered what would happen to you, and I am so glad that I get to see you back here today. I'd never really considered the work of a, of a midwife or, or a delivery nurse or an OB bringing the child into the world. These are these very intimate moments. They are delicate, they are dangerous. They are a time when someone's whole entire life changes. It's a time when someone's whole entire life begins. And, and these people are here for that moment of birth something we've all been through because we've all been born, and then these people just stop. The story just ends right there. They send an infant out into the world. They have no idea what will happen next in that child's life. They just trust that they have started a life out as well as they possibly could, and then they go back and do it again and again and again trusting that their work has made a difference, even if no one ever remembers them. About two months ago, I found myself in the election process for the bishop of the Minneapolis Area Synod. Don't worry, I lost. <laughs> but I was honored to serve in that synod's work of discernment, and to this day, I remain incredibly confident that the right woman became bishop, and she wasn't me. <laughs> Uh, but as part of the process, uh, there were these, these many sessions of kind of question and answer where voters in the synod could get to know the candidates. And one of my pastor friends was another one of the candidates for bishop in that synod. And something she said in one of those question and answer sessions really stuck with me. When she was asked what her vision for the church was, she said, a midwife. She envisioned the church as that which helps something new be born. There will be pain and there will be fear, but with love and compassion and toughness and maybe some gentle humor, perhaps we can get out of the way of, of how God is bringing something new into our midst. Perhaps we can actually work alongside the Spirit and something new can be sent out into the world, something, honestly, that we might never see the ending of. So I think of that as I think of our story of Pua and Shipra today. Pua and Shipra are midwives. And to be honest, the, the story isn't even really about them. The story is about how the Hebrews were enslaved by the Egyptians, how Pharaoh became intimidated about how many Hebrews there were in his kingdom. He decides that infanticide is the right answer. Uh, and the story is meant to tell us that his evil plans fail. They are thwarted by two women. And so he instead increases the workload of the Hebrews. He instead insists that baby boys be drowned in the river, an instruction that is followed in spirit, if not to the letter, by Moses's mother, who puts baby Moses in the river in a basket so that he can float down the Nile and be rescued by one of Pharaoh's daughters who raises him. This story isn't really even about the midwives. It's about oppression and freedom. It's about promises delayed and promises kept. It is about God's providence and God's power. And ultimately, it is the story of Moses and the story of the Exodus and the parting of the Red Sea and the journey into the promised land. The story isn't really about Pua and Shipra, but for this moment, it absolutely is about them. The author of Exodus slows way down to make sure that we get to hear about them. They even get names and direct quotes, something we almost never get 
from women in Scripture. So we learn that these midwives are not only good at their jobs, bringing many lives into the world, but we also learn that these women are bold and brave, flatly refusing to bow to intimidation, and even lying right to the Pharaoh's face when they're questioned about it. And while these midwives would never see the end of the story as we know it, the escape to freedom and the new life in a new land, they still know the abundance of God's blessing in the lives of those they served and in their own families. They are blessed, the story tells us. They are blessed because the midwives feared God. And so it makes me wonder, what is God calling us to midwife into the world today? How are we called to be the church, acting as midwives, helping something new? be born? How might we put in the work to bring something beautiful to fruition, even if it's something that we might not actually get to see the end of? How might we have courage in the face of all sorts of pressure to, to think only of ourselves or to make excuses when we avoid doing what is right, to think only of our own self-preservation and never the life that God has truly promised for all people. And because the text says that the midwives acted with such confidence because they feared God, I have to ask a bigger question. Do you fear God? I don't mean fear God like be terrified of God, but I do mean recognizing that God is not like you, that you are not God that God is something wholly different, wholly other than you, that you are not the center of the universe, wonderful as you are, you are not the center of the universe, God is. The story is not about you, but you are in the story. So, do you fear God? Do you believe and trust that God is up to something bigger in the world, something that needs you but isn't it about you, <laughs> something that your words and actions and faith bear witness to but that you might not ever be able to bear witness to for yourself, something that you need to help bring into the world but then release so that God's will may continue to be done among us? Pray that that answer is yes, because I am confident that God is up to something among us right here at Easter, something bigger than any one of us, something that might involve struggle and sacrifice on our part, but is nonetheless a life-giving thing that we get to help bring into the world. Because we are like midwives, like, like Pua and Shipra, knowing that it's up to us but not about us. Trusting that we get to do God's work and then we get out of the way so that God can do even bigger things, acting and living and serving and giving and praying and trusting like what we do matters because it does. For the new things that God brings to life among us and for the privilege of helping it happen, we say thanks be to God. Amen. Friends, we get to share in God's work among us by sharing what God has first given us, and so I thank you for the offerings that you bring and share today.
from the moment that I wake up until I lay my head, I will sing of the goodness of God. You are close like no other I've known you as a father I've known you as a friend I have lived in the goodness of God And all my life you have been faithful you to join me in thanking God for this offering. Let's pray together. God, our provider, you give us everything we need, especially your gift of faith, which you build new in us each day. Bless us and these your gifts, which we receive from you and return to you through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. As we prepare for baptism, we surround this family with the words of faith that have carried Christians for thousands of years. Would you join me in the words of the Apostles' Creed? I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. I have the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. This time we invite Henry's family forward to come forward at this time. We've got to stand right here for Sister 2, all the godparents and sponsors who are coming forward as well. And of course, children, if you would like to get a little bit closer look at this baptism, then you come and sit outside the circle. You're welcome to come closer too. If you guys want to come right around here, right around here, Brian, come way over here by me. We're going to make you do a big circle, but that's for you right there. You're welcome to be able to, yeah, that's for you. You have your own little special stand. You can pull that out wherever you want it to be. That's just fine. <laughs> She's like, eh, maybe in a second. Okay. So you guys have your little piece of paper here. I want you to grab one of those too. 
It's like, I got you. I got you. We got this. Okay. <laughs> you guys can scoot over by mom. That's cool. Go stand by your brother. <laughs> Perfect. Perfect. God, who is rich in mercy and love, gives us a new birth through the sacrament of baptism. By water and the word, God delivers us from sin and death and raises us to new life in Jesus Christ. In baptism, we are joined with all who are baptized. We are given the gift of the Holy Spirit, and we are called to join God's mission for the life of the world. As you all bring Henry to be baptized, do you promise to remain connected to the church, the body of Christ? Will you bring him to the services of God's house? Teach him the Lord's Prayer, the Apostles' Creed, and the Ten Commandments. And as he grows in years, will you help him to read the Bible and understand how much God loves him? Will you nurture him in the faith of the church? If so, answer, we will. And do you believe in God the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit as we just confessed in the Apostles' Creed? If so, answer, I believe. Do you turn away from all the things of this world that pull you from God and God's love? If so, answer, I do with God's help. And people of God, that's all of you and all of you and everyone here and those watching on the live stream today too. Will all of you support Henry and pray for him in his new life in Christ? If so, answer, we will. That was pretty good. Okay. So this time we're actually going to pour some water into the font to add more water as we pray. So you guys can go ahead and do that. We give you thanks, O God, for in the beginning your spirit moved over the waters. And by your word you created the world, calling forth life in which you took delight. Through the waters of the flood you delivered Noah and his family. And through the sea you led your people, Israel, from slavery into freedom. At the river, your son was baptized by John and anointed with the Holy Spirit. By the baptism of Jesus' death and resurrection, you set us free from the power of sin and death and raise us up to new life in you. Pour out your Holy Spirit, the power of your living word, that those who are washed in the waters of baptism may be given new life. To you be given honor and praise through Jesus Christ our Lord in the unity of the Holy Spirit now and forever. Amen. Amen. Now we get to baptize you, Henry. So mom's going to help hold you, and then everybody here can reach out a hand of blessing on him as he is. Henry got his dad's first name as his middle name. That's so great. All right, bud, it's okay. We're with you. Hi. <laughs> All right. Henry Corey Christopher, I baptize you in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Will you hold this for me? You hold that for brother? Perfect. All right, let us pray. We give you thanks, O God, that through water and the Holy Spirit you give your daughters and sons new birth, cleanse them from sin, and raise them to eternal life. Sustain Henry with the gift of your Holy Spirit, the spirit of wisdom and understanding, the spirit of counsel and might, the spirit of knowledge and the fear of the Lord, the spirit of joy in your presence both now and forever. Henry Corey Christopher, child of God, you have been sealed with the Holy Spirit and marked with the cross of Christ forever. And now your uncle is going to help light a special candle this baptismal candle, we light off of the Christ candle here. This reminds us of Jesus' presence, that Jesus is the light of the world. And guess what? Just because Henry's here, he's adding more light to our world. And we thank God for that. Jesus said, let your light so shine before others that they may see your good works and glorify your Father in heaven. And now on behalf of the entire church, Easter, and the church around the world, we use these words of welcome for Henry. Let's speak them together. We welcome you into the body of Christ and into the mission we share to grow in faith and carry on the work of Jesus Christ. Let's give Henry a round of applause. Yay! Amen. And everybody should see how cute this kid is after church. Come and greet him and congratulate his family. So glad to celebrate with you guys today. So glad to be with you today too. Yes. Thanks you guys for coming up. Can have a celebrate that up. See? Clapping and I'm good.
Each week, we recognize that we all carry lots of things throughout the week, some great, some hard. And so we always seek God in prayer together. And so each petition, Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. But as always, add your own prayers throughout this in your hearts and in your minds as we seek God together. We pray for the church, the whole world, and all those in need. Gracious God, equip your faithful people to approach this world with a sense of wonder. Give us courage when facing the new and the unknown. Make your church a safe place to explore the big questions, the troubling doubts, and the honest laments. Trusting in your promise to give us hope and a future. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Gracious God, thank you for calling and blessing Easter's ministry to youth and to young adults. Thank you for raising up faithful staff and volunteers to share your love, to teach and preach your word, to walk alongside the many young people you gather here. We especially pray for the mission trip participants, those returning from South Dakota, those departing for Benton Harbor, Michigan, those who have committed to praying for them. We pray for those experiencing the ministry of Egan Treehouse, and we pray for those enjoying the opportunities involved with Homework Helps Summer Program. Lord, in your mercy. Gracious God, bless Henry and Hannah on their baptisms today. Surround their parents and families, sponsors and loved ones with your spirit's wisdom and guidance. Call us all to care for these young people as they begin their lives of faith. Lord, in your mercy. Gracious God, you care for our needs even before we ask. So come quickly to all who seek you in prayer this day, especially Joe and Susan Udi, for Bob Lawrence and David Tripp, Norma Hagen, Lynette Lapresto, Harold Munshank, Barb Marr, and Jody Taylor. Accomplish healing through the work of doctors, nurses, physical therapists, and nutritionists, and all who tend to human bodies. Grant comfort to any who mourn, including the people of Kay Owens, Dan Reiners, and Robbie Danko. Lord, in your mercy. Gracious God, your faithfulness is never-ending. Your righteousness becomes ours through Jesus Christ. So send your church to proclaim the gospel near and far, including our global partners in Guatemala and Tanzania. Lord, in your mercy. All of these things, whatever else you see that we need, grant to us, gracious God, in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ, who taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in prayer, thy kingdom come, thy will be done. Give us this day our daily uh, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us through the devil. For then is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. We sing together. Jesus. 
thank our messengers for leading us in worship today. Woo! Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Man, appreciate them leading us in praise. A few brief announcements. We're so excited. It's going to be an amazing week this week, and we want you with us. So here's a few things to take with you out the door. The first one is our leaflet. It's a little piece of paper just outside the door here. If we can be serving you, if we can be encouraging you in some way, please give us an update on any in change of information. We'd love to be able to connect with you. And if you're a guest with us for the first time, you came on a great Sunday. What an incredible celebration we've had today, and we're so glad that you're here. We'd love to talk with you. Anybody with a lanyard can help you get some more information. We also want to remind you that we have JAM, Jesus and Me. It's our children's ministry and confirmation for our middle school and high school students. Registration is open already for this, and we ask that every single year you register for these things. Every year because things change. <laughs> so please take a moment. Get your kid, your grandkid, a friend registered. We're so proud of these programs and the way that they help introduce people to Jesus, especially our young people. So please, encourage someone to explore that. We also wanted to invite you to Guatemala. At the beginning, at the end of January of next year, join me and 15 friends. We're going to go to Guatemala. It's going to be an incredible opportunity to connect with people of peace, to help us see that there's another way to live, there's another way to follow Jesus, and that's alongside our brothers and sisters in Christ there. Come and join me. It's going to be an amazing trip. We're going to have a ton of fun uh, and see uh, our partnerships firsthand. So if you're interested, go to easter.org slash global partnerships. If you want to just a taster, tomorrow night, Monday, June 24th, the St. Paul Area Synod, which is our larger church community that we're connected to, is hosting an event here at Easter. That's right, Easter on the Hill. It's going to be an incredible opportunity to Zoom with the leaders of our sister church in Guatemala. It's going to be an incredible opportunity for you to meet Pastor Karin and Diego Gill. They help facilitate the incredible community down there. We'd love for you to come meet them and to connect with others in our, in our St. Paul area. Uh, who are also passionate about the Guatemala partnership that we have. You don't have to register. Please just come. It's going to be a great evening together. We also wanted to let you know that Lutheran Disaster Response is, again, working hard in the Middle East, specifically in Gaza and the West Bank. If you're interested and you're, you're, being, you're seeing the news, it's still going on, friends, just because we don't talk about it a ton. It's still happening, and they need our help. And so Lutheran Disaster Relief is on the ground helping with food, medical supplies, the things that people need for daily life. If you want to be a part of that, please consider a gift. You can go to, you can give a gift at the church office. You can give a gift online to support that humanitarian work that's so desperately needed. Your church is a part of that work. Finally, we wanted to let you know about life groups. Life groups are a chance for you to connect with those outside of just the Sunday morning experience. It's a great opportunity. There's all about different ages and stages of life and interest groups. There's so much to explore with that, and we wanted to let you know about that. 
Uh, one thing that we're launching right now is the 20-somethings group. We're having a board game night at North 20 on Tuesday, June 25th. That's this week. Love for you to come and hang out with us. Love to get you some more information about that. You can contact Jamie Day to learn more about that. And finally, Breathing Space is a respite group that helps folks with... Uh, supporting uh, the care of an elder in your community or in your life. And it's a great opportunity to learn more about every Friday that there is a, a need for support and care. And if you're interested in giving a little bit of time to support folks, this is a great opportunity. Go to easter.org slash care. You can learn more. Can you see all those opportunities? Wow. <laughs> this place is happening and you're part of it. So we're so glad that you've been here today. Would you please stand as we give you the blessing and head out into this coming week? The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. In the name of the Father and the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let's sing. the Lord.